What's going on guys? Welcome back to my personal channel. Welcome back to another transfer daily video for you guys today. Yesterday was a bit of a late upload, but you have to allow me like some days it's just a huge struggle to find some decent news to chat to you guys about. Today there is a couple developments. We're going to talk about Declan Rice and a potential revitalization of the Rice to Chelsea rumors and what could be causing that. We're going to talk about Malanga Saar and a potential move to Germany for him for the season. We're going to talk about how that links into the, to the Kai Havertz deal as well. Probably just spoiled where he's going to, but it is what it is. You lot know anyways. We're also going to talk about Inter Milan and N'Golo Kante rumours and how they have been mudded. Thank God, because I did not want to hear anything about those sorts of rumours. And we're also going to finish off by talking about Chelsea's goalkeeper targets and how we kind of need to sign a goalkeeper in the next few days if we want them to start the, the first two games of the season and how it doesn't look like that's going to happen. But before I start this video, I just want to say, as usual, if you guys haven't done so already, smash that like button, press that subscribe button and hit the bell notification button as well to be the first guy to know whenever I release any new content on this channel. You already know what it is. Hit that like button, press the subscribe button and the bell notification button as well. Let's go straight into the transfer news we're going to start with Declan Rice and Declan Rice to Chelsea has looked inevitable for a while not even in the case of it's going to happen this summer but I think it's just going to happen in general I think there's too many links between Declan Rice and Chelsea the Chelsea Academy some of the first team players as well Mason Mount and Tammy Abraham and as an example I think he was even on holiday in Mykonos with Pulisic, Tamori, Mount and Tammy Abraham which is also kind of the reason why you haven't seen Declan Rice in training or anything like that because he's been self-isolating the same way as the other four players have done. We've spoken about that in the previous video where we were talking about eight Chelsea players who now have to self-isolate because they got found with the virus or they've been close they've been in close contact with someone with the virus you already know why i'm not saying the name i am not trying to get demonetized but like we said this move looks very inevitable there's a lot of close links between declan rice and chelsea but it didn't really look like it was going to happen this season the key factor for whether we were going to get declan rice or not was going to be whether west ham stayed in the premier league or whether they didn't we lost home and away to West Ham and we kind of kickstarted their relegation fight and they've stayed up which means they could now hold Declan Rice for maximum price because they could at least offer him Premier League football. The reason why this now suddenly looks a bit more on the cards is because West Ham's transfer activity or lack of transfer activity. West Ham have needed reinforcements because they needed, they needed to get more players that fit De uh, David Moyes' style of play. But their transfer activity has been poor this season. They've only signed, they've only sold Albion Ajeti and Jordan Hughill for a combined £7.5 million. And obviously, if you're looking at serious reinforcements and if you're looking at the, at the position West Ham are in in the table, they need to spend a lot. And they need to get a lot of reinforcements in to try and strengthen their squad because they're always a lower mid-table club. And that's not even me trying to throw shots at West Ham. They really just are. They had one good season in 15-16 where they finished 7th above us as well, but 15-16 in it. And since then, it's just been lower mid-table. They look like they're going to go down, but they always pull something out of the hat in the last 10 minutes and stay up. We also give them about 3-4 points every season. You know Chelsea's spirit of giving when it comes to the lower half of the table. That's been a big key thing for us this last season as well. But with no players being sold or no players being sold for serious money, West Ham might be forced to really consider selling Declan Rice. And, De and David Moyes and West Ham don't want to do. He's by far and away their best player in the squad. But no one else is going for any cash. And they're looking at the case of they might go into next season with more or less the same squad. Maybe even a slightly weaker squad. I know they had a winger who had a lot of potential for them. Who now might be going to West Brom as well for a combined 12 million. So at that they've got like what 15 to 20 million pounds of spending money. It's nothing too much. They need serious real money if they want to get... If they, want, if they don't want to be in a relegation battle again next season. Because right now that looks exactly where they're going to be. Chelsea could offer them the player plus cash deal that we've been rumoured to be doing for ages. We've been talking about Mishi Batshuayi potentially going the other way or Ross Barkley, maybe even both. West Ham might have to seriously consider that if we get to mid-September, late September and there still isn't an offer on the cards for anybody else. They don't want to sell Declan Rice. But they might have to. I know it's going to put them in even worse relations with the fans. But to be honest, I think that bitch was burnt. 
torn to ashes. Ashes were brought back up and then burnt again. West Ham hate their owners. I think the owners probably hate them just as bad. But Declan Rice to Chelsea does look like it could happen. I'm still not really that sure whether it could happen in the window. It really depends on West Ham's metal and if this one lasts all the way to deadline day and they still haven't got anyone in, they have to make an emergency transfer. So we can see what happens. Me personally, I didn't really want Declan Rice initially. I was happy to see him come in a few seasons as well because I said we needed an experienced centre-back first over a player with potential because potential is good we got a lot of center backs with potential we need a leader someone who can guide and teach these players that's why we got in Thiago Silva now that we have Thiago Silva I wouldn't mind having Declan Rice I can't lie Declan Rice is versatile probably be the best natural DM that we have in the squad everyone's gonna say N'Golo Kante but he's not a natural DM he's a ball carrier we're trying to convert him into that role but he is a ball carrier he'll be the natural he'll be the best DM that we probably have he can also play centre-back as well. He's had the history with down the Frank Lampard. And now Thiago Silva there to help him out as well. So now I'm a lot warmer on the Declan Rice deal. Before I was willing to hold it for a few years. Also because an initial £80, 80 million pound fee for Declan Rice is daylight robbery. And we're not falling for the same mistakes that Manchester United make every season. We move differently than that. If we can try and get a reduction in the fee, even better. But... I don't know, I still don't really see this one happening in the summer unless West Ham really get desperate. So, I'm not sure. But let me know you guys' thoughts down in the comment section below. Second piece of news, and this is concerning Malanga Saar slash Kai Havertz. I might say slash because we're really struggling for developing news on the Kai Havertz deal on this front. But Malanga Saar looks to be going the other way. He looks to be going to buy a Leverkusen on loan. We knew when he came in he wasn't really going to be around the first team for the first season anyway. We knew he was going to be going on loan. There was a couple league league clubs interested, a couple Bundesliga clubs interested, by Leverkusen being one for example. And it looks to be, it looks Looks like he's going to be going to buy a Leverkusen. It's a little thing just to sweeten the Kai Havertz deal. It's fine, really. Like Leverkusen are a progressive club. I know they dropped out the top four last season. That's a big reason for why Havertz wants to leave. But they're a progressive club. I think him learning off Jonathan Tara as well. That's a great defender who has kind of slipped under the radar over the last few seasons. But It'll be good for him to learn and get more experience and regular game time and also not have not having as much pressure put on his shoulders as he was in his former club. You know, Vieira put a lot of pressure on him, also put him out of position as well and it kind of hindered his development. So it'll be good to see him go to another club where they'll play him at centre-back. They'll play in a more similar style of play. And yeah, it'll be good for him. Kai Havertz, we already know the situation. Medical was completed on Sunday. Um, all the other personal terms, transfer fee and everything is completed. We're literally just waiting on announcements. I think even the media roles have been completed. I said yesterday I didn't think they were done, but I think it has actually been done and we're just waiting on some mad announcement. This better be some of the best visuals I've ever seen from the Chelsea board if we're waiting this long just for an announcement. But guys, Havertz is already done. Malangasar looks to be done as well. Um, we'll talk about Inter Milan as well. We were saying that Inter Milan were interested in Golo Kante. Chelsea were rumoured to have put a 50 million euro bid in, a 50 million euro valuation in for the midfielder. Inter Milan looked to be interested in either a loan with an option to buy. Sorry, I had to do that. I was just I was holding for ages. But yeah, they were interested in an option to buy or they were interested in a 45 to 50 million euro deal. Now we know all those rumours are officially in the mud. First thing I want to say is thank God because any even thoughts of selling N'Golo Kante are just stupidness and I don't want to hear it. One of the best ball carriers in the world. One of the best defence... Was I say defenders or say best tacklers? One of the best tacklers in the game. You need someone with that sort of balance in the team. You look at the games like Bayern Munich at home where we missed N'Golo Kante. We got absolutely wiped out in the midfield. And you see why he's still vital to this squad. So I'm glad N'Golo Kante is staying. Uh, Inter sporting director Pe Piero Osilio. 
I really hope I pronounced that name. I had to really look into my script for that. He's denied reports saying we've never started anything. We've never started anything to sign Kante from Chelsea. No chance he's not a target. So these rumors officially in the mud. They're done. They're dusted. It ain't gonna happen. And Golo Kante stays. And apparently Frank Lampard still sees N'Golo Kante as a key part of this plan. So it's all good news on the N'Golo Kante front. He is still gonna be a Chelsea player. No clubs coming in for him unless it's for some mad 100 million plus offer. Final piece of news, Chelsea and our hunt for a goalkeeper. We know we're still interested in Eduard Mendy. I'm hearing a couple rumours about Gianluigi Donnarumma as well. But um, just a little point I wanted to make. If Chelsea want a goalkeeper and we want a keeper from La Liga or Ligue 1, we have to sign them by Saturday to play against Liverpool. As the player won't train for a day or two, we need them signed tomorrow if they want to play against Liverpool unless the restrictions are lifted. So, if we don't get a goalkeeper in in the next one or two days, we've got Kepa and Willy Capiero for the first two games of the season. Is what it is. I will be real. I mean, we've had to deal with these goalkeepers the last season and we still finished in the top four. So, I know we're not looking for top four this season. We're looking to progress in the title race, but... First two games of the season, I mean, we've still got a month to bring in a goalkeeper, so it's not too much in the grand scheme of things. But we know how much bad goalkeeping has cost our team this season, last season. We would have been second place with a better goalkeeper, straight up, because consistency was just a huge problem in the side. Let's see who we end up getting. It's still all speculation at this point, but it does look like Kepa and Willy Caballero are going to be starting the first two games of the season. Let me know in the comments below, who do you want to see start, Willy or Caballero? Willy or Kep? Let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. Let me know who you guys want to see starting goal. Do you guys want to see Willy Caballero starting goal? Or do you want to see Kepa starting goal? Let me know your thoughts on the Declan Rice rumours and the Malanga Sata Leverkusen rumours as well. No point talking about N'Golo Kante because that really is just done and dusted. But let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. Don't forget to like and subscribe to Carefree Lewis G. And I'll see you guys very, very soon. Take care. Up the trails.